The chord track and chord pads are two amazing compositional tools that come included with Cubase Elements. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use them to quickly create music and also control VST instruments like Heli and Sonic SE. We're also going to have a really good playthrough with the VST amp rack. I've created myself a Heli and Sonic SE track. That's the first thing to do before you use the chord track. Now I'm adding a chord track into my project and I'm going to set the chord track up to monitor through the Heli and Sonic SE channel. Right mouse click to get your toolbox, grab your pencil and start entering in these blocks, which are basically chords. So they're building blocks or the foundation for the production which we're creating. I've got snap to grid on so you can see that they're locking in perfectly with my grid. Double click on the first X to load up the circle of fifths. At the top I've got C and at the moment this is my root or main chord and all of these chords around C or whichever chord I have at the top will be chords that will fit together really well in a chord progression. There are thousands of number one hits that have been written with just the chords in that top sector in the circle of fifths and that's what makes it such a powerful compositional tool. You can just use your cursor keys on your computer keyboard to move backwards and forwards in between the chords. And at any point in time, you can just grab your pencil and start entering more and develop your idea further. Of course, with contemporary songwriting, repetition's good. So a lot of the time, once you've got that initial idea or that initial musical sentence, it's a matter of repeating it. You can also play notes on an external MIDI keyboard and the chord editor will tell you what the chord is, which is great if you're not too sure about music theory. Once you've come up with an idea, have a listen. And if it's not right, the best thing about the chord track is you can just move these blocks around. I feel like these two musical sentences were too close together, so I've just dragged the second one out by another bar. And that's immediately given me more space in between these two sentences. Down in the lower zone, we've got chord pads. It's fairly self-explanatory. They're pads that contain chords and we can trigger them externally using a MIDI controller. We can also take the chords that we've just added up in the chord track and assign them to pads down the bottom. Now the great thing about being able to trigger them externally is you really only need one finger. So this is another way of having a little bit more creative freedom I guess because I can press down with one finger and then choose the timing of where these chords are going to sit in my project. When you've found an idea, simply hit record and start playing away. It's easy to edit what you've just recorded. You can resize the event by picking up on the bottom left and right handles, and then you can move events around and copy and paste by picking up on the handle on the right hand side of the event. And now I've got the perfect building block. I can further shape my sound by editing the instrument, which is Hellion Sonic SE. Every preset in Hellion Sonic SE comes with its very own set of quick controls. It's a really quick way of shaping your sound. Go across to the Edit tab for more parameters, which will help you shape your sound even further. Hellion Sonic SE has eight pads of its own inside the instrument, and you can right mouse click to assign trigger notes and do things like take a snapshot of some chords. All I need to do is place some notes on my keyboard and it's instantly assigned those notes to the chord pad. Once again, all you need to do is go to a blank pad, right mouse click, take a snapshot of the chord, place some notes on your keyboard, and instantly it's assigned. This gives us even more pad options for recording inside a Cubase. There's loads of content inside Heli and Sonic SE3, and it also comes with 16 slots, which we can load presets into. You can assign MIDI channels to these slots. So I'm just adding a MIDI track, giving it a name, and now on the left-hand side, I can assign the output or where I'm going to connect this MIDI track to. So you can see it's connected to Hellion Sonic SE and at the moment it's specified to channel 2. But if I change that to channel 1, my MIDI channel's now controlling channel 1 in Hellion Sonic SE. It's easy to assign channels. I'm going to assign this now to channel 2 and go over and load a preset into the second slot. It keeps things nice and clean and easy. It means now I've got 16 slots and I can assign 16 MIDI channels to those slots and the sounds are all coming from the one instrument. So there's only one instance of Hellene Sonic SE3. Once you've found the right preset, it's a matter of messing around with the quick controls and finding something that works for your track. 
You can also automate the movement on these quick controls and change the automation out in the main project window. Like Groove Agent, Hellion Sonic SE3 comes with its very own suite of powerful inbuilt effects, so everything can be done inside the box. Cubase Elements 10 comes with a VST amp rack, so it's time to plug the guitar in and start playing. Along the top of the VST amp rack, you can see a number of tabs. At the moment, I'm in the master tab, which gives me access to the EQ, a master volume, and also a tuner. So you just need to press the button in, like you would with a guitar pedal, to access the tuner. And once you've finished tuning your guitar, make sure you press down on that button again to turn off the bypass. Recording sections of guitar in Cubase Elements is really easy. I'm in cycle record mode and I've set up two cycle record points and I'm just cycling backwards and forwards. And Cubase is recording every take that I do in between these two points. I'm going to take a moment to do a little bit of a playthrough with the VST amp rack so you can get some idea of the full functionality. Let's first take a look at the microphone tab. There's a condenser and an SM57 and we can blend in between each mic. But have a listen as I move the microphones around. So the condenser is more of a hi-fi sound. Placing the off axis. And this will give us that classic SM57 sound. Let's move over to the amplifier section. And there's a number of classic guitar amplifiers that have been carefully modeled for the VST amp rack. Let's just have a playthrough and a listen to some of them. There's so many different presets in the VST amp rack, and each preset contains a different combination of pedals, both pre and post, amplifiers, cabinets, and of course, master EQ settings. You'll find a preset for pretty much every genre, so if you're not used to putting together a whole entire signal chain, don't worry, engineers have done that job for you, even down to microphone placement combinations, which is not something we can all do in a small apartment or a house. The other great thing about having this as a plugin built right into Cubase Elements is you don't need to have a lot of guitar gear. You can find a sound that's gonna work instantly in your track and just hit record. And of course, you don't need to record with the perfect sound either because you can always go back in and tweak it afterwards. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. There's plenty more videos just like this on the Cubase YouTube channel. Please stop by and subscribe and leave us comments to let us know how you're being creative with Cubase Elements. I'll see you there.